Hello everyone, my name is Wendy Myers of MyersDetox.com. I want to talk to you guys today about a very important topic, heavy metals that affect your thyroid. Thyroid medication is one of the number one prescribed medications and most of you guys listening, if you reach a certain age, you start having thyroid issues and a doctor just automatically puts you on thyroid medication and it helps some of you, but for others, it's not helping. The doctor will maybe will tweak your medication, increase it, and you still don't have relief of your symptoms, which can be depression, brain fog, weight gain, feeling having cold hands and feet, and so many other uh, symptoms that people have as a result of poor thyroid functioning. Let's not forget Hashimoto's, which is autoimmune thyroid disease that can actually destroy thyroid tissue, um, and Graves' disease, which is hyperthyroid. Your thyroid is revved up and you have anxiety constantly. So a lot of different malfunctions of the thyroid are caused by many different reasons. So we're gonna be talking today about how toxic metals affect your thyroid function and some things you can do to find out if you are heavy metal toxic. So let's start with heavy metals that affect the thyroid. So there are, include mercury, lead, cadmium, nickel, cesium, arsenic, aluminum, tin, and thallium. And these affect your thyroid indirectly and directly in many different ways, which we're gonna discuss on this video today. And so you're probably listening, thinking, what the heck are, are those? I've never even heard of those uh, heavy metals before. So that's my job. I want to educate you about all these different metals and how they're affecting your health because you're not learning this information from your doctor or even your functional medical practitioner. So the three ways that metals affect the thyroid are by enzyme inhibition, um, enzymes are involved in the production of your thyroid hormones and thyroglobulin, which is the storage form of your thyroid hormone. They affect, uh, they interfere in amino acid absorption and they prevent iodine uptake in the thyroid. So in interference and amino acid absorption, uh, there are metals like arsenic, aluminum, tin, and thallium that uh, they affect the absorption of tyrosine in the gut. And this is an amino acid that's required for the production of thyroglobulin, which is the storage form of thyroid hormone. It's what's used to then manufacture T4, which floats around in your body, and then your body converts that to T3, which is the active form of thyroid hormone. That's what helps you to lose weight and turns your brain on and kind of gets you going, gives you energy. So if you have low tyrosine, you're gonna have low thyroglobulin. Then it takes energy to uh, for that iodine in your diet to get into your thyroid and iodine is what is used to make your thyroid hormones t4 has four iodine molecules and t3 has three iodine molecules it's what they're made of and so if you don't have enough iodine in your diet and you have certain metals interfering in your energy production, which is required to get iodine into your thyroid, not gonna happen very successfully. So there's metals like cesium, arsenic, aluminum, tin, thallium that all prevent uh, and poison enzymes that transport nutrients into your mitochondria, which are cells little powerhouses, and they, they prevent energy production. So these metals directly interfere in your energy production. And so let's talk specifically also about mercury. Mercury is the biggest toxin to the thyroid. It interferes in thyroid functioning in four different ways. And so number one, it affects your thyroid. It affects, number two, your pituitary. Number three, it affects your hypothalamus, all of which are involved in thyroid hormone signaling, the thyroid hormone feedback loop. And number four, it affects your blood. And so we'll go over all those in detail. So number one, mercury deposits into your thyroid. And so this causes problems because if you develop a sensitivity to mercury, like an allergy to mercury, 
you can develop Hashimoto's where your body develops antibodies to the mercury or to your thyroid tissue and then attacks and destroys your thyroid tissue when it's actually trying to get to the mercury. And so uh, that's a really big problem that it's not just about the amount of mercury you have in your body, your immune system can develop an allergy to the mercury and can wreak havoc on your body in and of itself. Number two, your pituitary gland. Uh, your mercury can deposit in your pituitary gland and that can cause issues because your pituitary is involved in uh, you know, communicating it with your thyroid and telling you to produce more or less of thyroid hormone. Number three, your hypothalamus. Mercury can deposit in your hypothalamus. And because of this, TSH, or thyroid stimulating hormone, is inhibited. And TRH, thyrotropin releasing hormone, which is manufactured in the hypothalamus, is inhibited as well. So TSH manufacture is inhibited and less can be produced as a result. And mercury also interferes in signaling and the cells themselves by interfering in that delicate feedback loop that converts T4 to T3 and then the signal communicating back to the hypothalamus. And so this interferes in the feedback loop from T4 to the pituitary cells that regulate TSH synthesis or thyroid stimulating hormone. That's the hormone that gets uh, tested at your doctors when he's trying to determine the level of functioning of your thyroid. And number four, in your blood, mercury inhibits the conversion of free T4 to free T3 in your blood. So T4 is your thyroid hormone and then T3 is the active form of your thyroid hormone. So that's really what we need to be working properly so that you feel the benefit of a good functioning thyroid. It's not T4 as much, it's T3. And so if anything is interfering in the conversion of T4 to T3, like mercury, you're gonna have a problem. You could be taking uh, all kinds of, of Synthroid, or if you're taking Synthroid medication, which is synthetic T4, then mercury will prevent that T4 from converting into T3. So you're taking this thyroid medication, it's not working because mercury is interfering in it. That's one of the main reasons why your thyroid medication may not be working. So if you are taking medication, it can be better to just take straight T3, which is called the cytomel, and that can resolve that conversion issue that's caused by this toxic metal. So you may want to have that conversation with your doctor. And mercury, it basically poisons enzymes like DA autonasers that convert free T4 to T3 in blood circulation. So that's the mechanism by which that happens. And so let's touch on Hashimoto's. That's a, a big hot topic. A lot of people have thyroid autoimmune disease and for a various number of reasons. So mercury itself induces autoimmune diseases. So people, depending upon their genetics, can develop antibodies to different types of mercury. There's not just one, there's inorganic mercury from mercury fillings, there's methyl mercury from fish, and there's also uh, thimerosal, which is 50% mercury found in vaccines, and flu vaccines. And so you can find antibodies to one or all of the above metals with metals antibodies testing. And so most commonly, Mercury can induce anti-thyroglobulin antibodies involved in Hashimoto's, but can also induce a type of antibodies that cause Graves' disease, which is hyperthyroidism that can cause anxiety. And so Hashimoto's doesn't always induce hypothyroidism. You can get Hashimoto's apart from hypothyroidism and still have a reasonable production of hormones. You can have normal hormone levels. And so Hashimoto's can go undetected if you just do the standard panel of TSH testing or T4 or T3 at your doctors. You need to do both antibodies tests to detect if you may have Hashimoto's. So you can have antibodies attacking your thyroid and yet have normal production of T4 and T3 on tests 
and have Hashimoto's. So it can be five, 10 years down the road uh, that it can then lower thyroid hormone production. So you wanna be very aware of that. And so let's talk a little bit about lead. So lead gets into your hypothalamus and interferes in TSH production and it interferes in enzymes as well. So TRH is a peptide and this interferes in the manufacture of TRH, thyrotropin releasing hormone and ribosome function. If you're listening to this video, it might be ringing some bells for you that heavy metals may be causing your thyroid issues and I guarantee that they are. Everyone has heavy metals in their body. They enter our body through the air, food and water. We get mercury in our water. We get it from coal burning. That gets it into the atmosphere. We're breathing it in. That gets it into the ocean, which then gets into our fish. So anyone eating fish is gonna have mercury. And there's so many different other ways that mercury can enter our body. It's in 400 different medications. It's in uh, so many different things. It's really hard to go into it uh, over the scope of this video. But just long story short, everyone has some level of heavy metals in their body. That's what I'm dedicated uh, my life to is trying to get the word out that these are interfering your body's metabolic processes in so many different ways. So if you want to learn more about how to remove these toxins from your body, just click the link below. There's some information below about how to do that. And thanks so much for listening.